Then, I'm able to see that. Great. Would you be able to demo your GIS? Do you have uh, the time to make a demo? Um, I think so. I've got uh, prepared the um, the COVID vaccine app, which I it's you know it's from some months ago, so I'm not 100% sure all the data is connected. But we can take a quick look at it, and also um, two dashboards that we've recently prepared. Okay. Thank you for your time. Sure, my pleasure. Yeah. And so far we have a participant from Bali. So next time, if you have opportunity, just uh, come to Indonesia again and visit <laughs> Bali. I would love to and, come to Indonesia yeah. again, yes. And here we have uh, the Director of Information Communication Technology Center on Transportation, Captain Avirianto. Uh, good evening, Cap Avi. Hello, good evening, Mr. Anato. Hi. Hi, Ami. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, Ami, uh, ICT Center on Transportation is a division, a big division in Ministry of Transportation. Which, uh, which is responsible to handle the IT in Ministry of Transportation. So this division has a lot of work uh, to do now and in the future. So I hope that uh, maybe you can give uh, some recommendation to our ministry regarding the ICT management in United States Department of Transportation. We are looking forward to learning from your side about the ICT or GIS uh, management in USDOT. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure we can both learn from each other. In fact, um, we do have a dedicated GIS system admin. So that's not me, but of course I can facilitate an uh, introduction if needed. And our director, Captain Avirianto, he has a lot of uh, experience and also has a long uh, career in uh, Ministry of Transportation, more than 15 years. Uh, career in Ministry of Transportation. He was a uh, director in uh, airworthiness, uh, civil aviation, uh, and many uh, positions, a lot of positions in Ministry of Transportation. He is a very important uh, person and uh, very famous uh, leader in Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Amy, uh, can you see the statue beside uh, Captain Avirianto? The statue it's is uh, coming amazing. from Bali. Yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. Is that um, painted wood or what's it made of? Yes. So I think I you saw a lot that statue when you were in Bali. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, right above my desk, I have this hanging. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. It's it's not That's as impressive. Yes. <laughs> not as impressive as your statue, but it's still a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> From Bali, um... <laughs> I'm sure it's changed a lot since 2000, which was when I was there. Yeah. Right now, more beautiful. So hopefully you can come again to Bali and Indonesia. Yes, I would love that. I have a friend who's moving to Singapore, so perhaps oh. I will go visit him. Thank you. 
Excuse me, Mr. Ananto, we can start now. Amy, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's start the webinar for today. Uh, good morning and evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our webinar, The Role of a Geographical Information System, or GIS, in Transport Planning and Analysis. Before we begin, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Hanan Bakoso, Transportation Attaché at the Embassy of Indonesia in Washington, D.C., and it is my honor to be your moderator for today's webinar. Spatial planning and transportation system have a close relationship with each other. As a region develops both economically and demographically, transportation activities are also increasing. If this is not anticipated, problems will arise in the transportation sector, especially traffic jam that currently often occur in big cities in the world, as well as in Indonesia. Indonesia has not yet integrated transportation planning with the spatial planning optimally. The problem of severe congestion, as we can see in Jakarta as the capital, is a crucial transportation problem that is closely related to the spatial planning. GIS, as a geographical information system tools, is indeed the most appropriate tool in making spatial application. As almost every area of life, GIS can contribute to transportation excellence. This is a great support in more effectively planning monitoring and managing complex system related to transportation planning and management. GIS have helped determine capacity expansion, improve operation, and identify the most strategic investment to optimally operate transportation system in its country. Moreover, the use of GIS in transportation is widespread. The major areas of application include highway maintenance, traffic modeling, accident analysis, and route planning. Therefore, Indonesia still needs to learn from other countries that have successfully implemented the integration of transportation planning with spatial planning. This is a good opportunity for us to learn and understand how the United States Department of Transportation optimized the utilization of GIS in transport policy and analysis. This webinar is organized by Information Communication Technology Center on Transportation and attended by Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia officials, as well as other related stakeholders in Indonesia. And now we would like to welcome the Director of Information Communication and Technology Center on Transportation, Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia, Captain Afirianto. Good evening, Captain Afi. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Mr. Nanto Prakasa. And of course, our speaker, I would like to welcome Ms. Amy Nelson from United States Department of Transportation, United States of America. Good morning, Ms. Nelson. Good morning to you, Hananto, and good evening to everyone else. We would like to express gratitude for all to attend our webinar. We hope everyone in a good health, and I think you should be proud of this webinar because right now this webinar is attended by close to 400 participants. Bravo for all us. Okay, for the first time, to mark the beginning of our event, we will witness together the opening remark from the Director of Information, Communication, and Technology Center on Transportation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Captain Afirianto, Captain Afi, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Excellency, the beauty, geospatial information officer, United States Department of Transportation, Miss Amy Nelson. Excellency Secretary of Directorate General of Transportation, Excellency Head of the uh, Head of Center of Secretariat General of MOT, Excellency Transportation Tech Indonesian Embassy Washington DC, Mr. Hananto Pakoso, and all participants. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Good evening. On behalf of Information Communication Technology Center of Transportation, Minister of Transportation of Republic Indonesia, it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome to all this knowledge sharing session on the topic of the role of the Geodigital Information System, GIS, in transportation policy and analysis. Thank you for being in this virtual event. In this event, our primary agenda is sharing knowledge from the United States Department of Transportation expert, Amy Nelson, the Beauty Geofestival Information Officer. On this role of GIS and its utilization of the plot main transportation policy and analysis. The current, the further policy is with the transportation system department is how is the country plays is the role, the framework of the stable transportation system. The problem is so stable the development is the issue where every country is required to focus in the global agenda. Particularly related to transportation issue, the issue of the specially is the logical sequences that were directly re related because regional development and land use are fundamentally influenced by transportation network. In this case, the development of the transportation system and Spatial planning has the post relationship in the formation of the space trust effort to provide transportation facilities for regional development must revert to the spatial plan. And conversely, the evolution of the development transportation system will also provide the basic safe on land use characteristic. Our honorable guests, currently Indonesia has not yet just the optimal integration of the transportation special planning. As we can see, in some big the city serve traffic congestion is the critical transport issue that closely like to special planning. Regulation growth the Defeats from the spatial design, such as from the related detail to commercial function. We have a part one with the traffic conclusion. I'm confident much of us here, the family with the GIS or its data processing tools. GIS, like practically. If every other aspect of the life may help improve transportation. This the uh, art help in more successful planning, motivation and controlling complaint, transportation planning and management system. On the, considering that fact on the Oceanian, I can relate the government of Indonesia has begun the build special data set towards a one map policy based on the presidential regulation of the Republic of Indonesia number nine of 2016. The government is trying to create the implementation, the policy as the map at the real level one to 15,000 square. Uh, furthermore, to, in 2018, the Minister of Transport has commented to integrated thermatical geophysical information transportation in further with the include airport, spatial terminal, train station, and railroad will the map of Indonesian landscape at this map. In additional, Ministry of Transport has also developed SIGITA. Application SIGITA means ge geographical information system or transportation. It can be used monitoring 
and edit Indonesian transportation influence data. Indonesia, on the other hand, still has a lot to learn from other countries regarding the world like to learn from America, particularly the as the OT which has effectively integrated transportation and spatial planning. They have been considering and the facility completion of the geospatial transportation data set of the models responding to accident and natural fisheries testing policy analysis also perform which and development are just few of the first best accurate from the data. I'm sure Mr. Nelson can share more with us to him does this from two that it will clarify what step we must take to be successful in the utilized geospatial data from transportation platform. Hopefully this knowledge sharing agenda will add to our insight and understanding of how to code utilize the geophysical data and optimize its use for the transportation sector so that we can gain great benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very fly confident that your active participant and valuable contribution will provide sustained outcome to forward our effort in informing transportation planning quality, informing GIS to create better transportation system in Indonesia. Thank you, you for bringing your energy knowledge and expertise. I wish you all quickly discussion. Thank you. Assalamualaikum yeah. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, Captain Afi, for the opening remark. Please give virtual applause to Captain Afi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay, now it is the time to photo opportunity to our speakers and participants. Please look into your camera so that we can imagine this moment and please make sure that your camera is turned on. So uh, this is for the first screen. Please take a picture in three, two, one, smile. Okay, for the second screen, three, two, one, and smile. Okay, this is the last screen, screen number three. Three, two, one, and smile. Thank you. I know that we are looking forward to our next part of our webinar, the presentation from our extraordinary speaker from United States the Department of Transportation. She will provide us with insight about the utilization of geographical information system at the United States Department of Transportation. Right after, of course, we will have question and answer session before the end of our webinar. To ask question, please put your question to the Q&A box with the particular format. Type your name, space, and question. I repeat, to ask question, Please put your question to the Q&A box with the particular format. Type your name, space, and question. So without further ado, on behalf of the organizing committee, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our knowledge sharing webinar, dedication from the Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia. The presentation will be given by Ms. Amy Nelson. Ms. Amy Nelson is the Deputy Geospatial Information Officer at the United States Department of Transportation. She manages uh, U.S. DOT's uh, geospatial response during disaster, lead DOT's implementation of federal geospatial regulation, 
and guidance, including the Geospatial Data, Data Act. Is the lead author of uh, US DOT's GIS strategic plan, manage a US DOT's geospatial community, and assist with the national address database and work zone data exchange uh, project. Ms. Nelson has 15 years of service in the federal government, including 13 years as the pipeline and hazardous material administration GIS manager. She holds a BA in geography from the University of Mary Washington and an MA in GIS from Clark University. Okay, once again, good morning, Amy. Uh, Amy, screen is yours. Thank you so much, Hananto, for the introduction. And thanks to all of you for inviting me to speak to you today. I'm going to start sharing my slides. And could someone just confirm, just give me a thumbs up if you can see the slides. Yes. Okay, I think it's displaying correctly. So I know that there were um, quite a few questions. So I will go through the presentation and then leave time for your questions, which I got in advance, which I've already looked at. And then we'll see if there's time for additional questions. So during this presentation, we'll talk about the history of GIS at DOT, how we use it to support our mission goals, how we use it to assist in disaster response, how we implement the presidential administration priorities for GIS, our current and future GIS strategic plan, geospatial data governance, which I think is very key to all of our other operations. So DOT's mission, I won't read through this slide here, but we are focused on safety, efficiency, and modernizing our transportation system. But the most important word is safety, and so many of our analyses and projects have safety at their heart. As you can see, we began using GIS in the mid 80s, and Federal Highways was the first to launch its GIS program. And then a few of the other divisions, I might call them modes, as in modes of transportation, came on board in the next decade or so. That was aviation, FAA, FRA's rail, and FIMSA, which is where I worked before coming to this position, which is pipelines and hazmat. They all began GIS programs. I was the GIS manager at FIMSA when I worked there. In 2008, DOT decided that we needed some sort of overarching um, governance and supervision of the GIS programs. So they selected a geospatial information officer. That is my supervisor. His name is Steve Lewis. And he was at the time in his own home administration. So he had that job in addition to his other duties. And then as that role grew around about 2019, he was moved to the Geospatial Management Office or GMO, and that's inside our OCIO or Office of the Chief Information Officer. And that's when I was hired. And as I mentioned, we have a dedicated GIS admin or we call him the GIS Shared Services Manager. So he was hired in 2020. So we are slowly growing our office. You know, we hope to have more hires in the future and um, implementing the oversight program of GIS at DOT. Uh, we have uh, about 400 members of our two user groups. So we divide that into FAA and non-FAA and that's because the FAA IT systems are, all, are totally separate from the rest of DOT. So when we get on uh, Teams and Zoom calls and the like, you know, everything, everything is separate. And the same with our file structure and everything else. Hence the need to have two user groups. And we have approximately 130, what I call GIS professionals. So that's people who have GIS as the primary part of their job, but we have over 500 people who use the GIS software, just not as, just not needing the qualifications of a GIS professional for their job, just 
using it for parts of their responsibilities. And then I spoke about the modes. We also call them components. That's the term they want us to use. So in the past about 18 months, we designated component GIOs. And so like, for example, the FAA has their own GIO. And I'll show you a diagram when we get to the question section about how that relates to the GMO. So how do we exactly use GIS to support our mission? Well, first of all, we have a lot of essential foundational transportation data that's kept in a geospatial format. And I think that makes sense because transportation is geospatial. It's about moving from place to place and you know things in space and traveling along a line or where something is located. So it lends itself easily to GIS data. And primarily we curate and share these data layers. So we're not really in the business of data creation. We collect it from a various state, local agencies and also industry. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the questions. So we curate it, we quality control it, a couple other things, and then we share it through some of these platforms that are listed here. And the DOT GIS shared service is an internal platform, but um, the other ones have internal and external components. We do have GIS widespread throughout DOT. There's just two divisions that don't use it. One is the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is a very small mode or component. And the other is the inspector general, who as you might know, just conducts oversight as an independent body throughout the government. These examples uh, generally come from our GIS strategic plan, which I know that some of you have reviewed already. I'm not going to read through each one of them. And just to say that there is constantly new projects that we're standing up, that we're exploring, that we're running pilots for. But I do wanna highlight a few things here. When you look at the what the Federal Highway Administration is doing, it's this GIS network of roads. So to model traffic flow is kind of a sophisticated operation because you have to have the network flow through the lines and know which connect and which direction travel is. And then also the throughput or the amount of traffic on each of those roads. So that is a sophisticated operation, that network. What federal motor carrier is doing is, uh, I would say, a common use of GIS here. And again, that's for safety. So they are sort of modeling crashes involving large trucks. And um, also at the pipeline administration, we did a lot of modeling in terms of things like spill dispersion, uh, modeling hotspots where pipeline accidents were occurring trying to find commonalities about where accidents are occurring. But back up to rail, uh, Federal Railroad has a mature GIS program and they're in the Office of Safety. So they're mainly looking at freight and they're monitoring the flow of the, the freight throughout the US and where there are bottlenecks and um, what, what is uh, any common characteristics of accidents for that mode. Federal Transit Administration, so again, it's sort of a modeling where they're forecasting ridership demand. <clears throat> MARAD, our Maritime Administration, are um, helping the ports with their analysis and tactical decisions. So they're sort of creating a profile of each port. The H Highway Traffic Safety Administration, again, a safety, and this is uh, reactive and proactive and that they are mapping the fatal crashes that have occurred. And then, you know, like with the pipelines, finding any hot spots that um, are on highways so they can allocate more resources to trying to figure out what's going on and making that area safer. Just added some graphics here. Um, and the one on the left, I think, is a little bit interesting. So that was at FAA. And this was produced, I believe, in February 2020. 
So as you can see, it was trying to predict uh, peak hospital use. And it was predicting, you know, that would happen generally in April, 2020. So sometimes the modeling and the analysis is wrong. As we know, this isn't the peak hospital use, but based on the few COVID cases we had, and I remember in February, 2020, myself creating a map that showed 11 COVID cases in the US. And uh, that's the information we had at that point. And as the information evolves, you've got to input into the model and rerun the model. So on the right, we see basically where pipeline inspectors, the area boundaries of their inspection. And the inspectors go into the field and they're capturing data about a pipeline operator's assets in that area. And um, that is transferred if the pipeline is bought or sold to the new operator. And on the left, we can see a map for international trade where the, um, the fleet route was and where the port calls were. So kind of a, it's a 3D uh, viewer. And as I was talking about the rail administration, so they're just showing how much commodity is moving across the US and where it's traveling, where the heaviest traffic is. Again, another um, current topic, although this was, uh, this isn't being kept up to date at the moment. It was used um, earlier in 2021 and pretty much soon after the vaccines became available. So the question here was what communities might have certain barriers to obtaining the vaccine? And of course we were looking at transportation barriers. So we're looking at which communities are disadvantaged. They might have an economic disadvantage, a health disadvantage, you know, a language disadvantage, and how close are they to transit? So can we identify communities that don't have access to transit and are vulnerable? And then with our partner FEMA, we reached out to these communities and provide additional assistance, you know, people on the ground to uh, distribute the vaccine and set up vaccination centers by figuring out where they were most needed. A large part of my job is GIS for disaster response. And this has been going on since 2018. So prior to 2018, if there was a hurricane or perhaps earthquake, wildfires, something of that nature, and then of course, you know, there are man-made disasters as well. Each division, each component would create their own maps showing just, you know, in pipelines, it was pipelines, in rail, it was rail, what was going on with the disaster there. But in 2018, we decided to put it all together and show it all in one map. And uh, that is part of why my position was created to have someone to oversee this. So we can see here a map that was produced during Hurricane Florence in 2018. And we can see um, the airports, the roads, and the red represents the road closures. And then we also have rail in which rail lines are suspended and ports as well. So the group is geospatial subject matter experts from all the components. And we come together and that was a bit of an IT challenge to have us all use the same environment. We settled on using a virtual machine where we keep all of the data and can all work on the same map instead of passing maps back and forth, passing data back and forth. So we are producing these maps um, usually twice a day, uh, sometimes more or less often for several days when an event occurs. And with transportation, often the uh, most important time is a day, two days, three days after the event occurs. So before the hurricane, for example, you are showing the path of the hurricane. The components are working to notify uh, operators of transportation in the affected area and perhaps shut down things. But then a few days after the storm has come through, that's when you really see the effects on the transportation infrastructure. That's when roads start getting washed out, ports become uh, inoperational, rail lines go down, airports have closures. 
So it's really slightly after the event that's the most important thing. We're also looking to incorporate more analysis and not just visualization into our support. So just for a very simple example, what are the miles of road closed? What are the populations effective? And again, predictive analysis, what are the areas of the country that are most at risk of having a major hurricane? Switching gears a little bit, we're gonna talk about presidential administration priorities. There's a lot that occurs um, at really any government agency when a presidential administration changes. The way that we see it at DOT is, for one thing with the disaster maps, each secretary is going to have his or her own preferences, the types of products they want. And in the Biden administration, we're seeing a lot of executive orders that affect DOT and can we can use GIS to assist with. For example, equity. So the Biden administration, pretty much on day one of their administration, so it's been a year now, issued an executive order to uh, ensure that the money the government was spending was going towards populations that were disadvantaged or underserved. And the goal is to have these grants, these funds uh, go, 40% of them go to these communities that are underserved. So the first question is, well, how do you find the underserved populations? And we're looking just at transportation disadvantage, we call it. So that is a geospatial problem. What are the factors of transportation disadvantage? Can we look at the census data? Can we find these populations? Can we run models to locate where these populations are? And I'm going to uh, let me um, stop sharing just for a moment so I can switch over to my web browser. And I want to show you a tool that is um, not ready for public release. So I didn't include it in the presentation, but I'm comfortable with just showing you a quick uh, demo of it. Okay, so as I was talking about with transportation disadvantage, we mapped a certain number of factors and it was you know, a collaborative process to decide what those factors would be. And on this map, you can select a state and then see the transportation census tracts. They come up in orange here. So when we click on one of these, okay, let me um, go to a different state here. This is still under construction. It's possible that um, where my developer left it last night, we're not gonna be able to see some of the data this morning. Let me just refresh it here. As you can see, it's still working. So just a word about dashboards. We love this dashboard format at DOT. It's really catching on. And I don't know if you use it in Indonesia, but it could be a great tool because you've got the map window and then you've got various statistics and these will update as you move the map. Right now, the default is Hawaii. It doesn't know yet that we've um, zoomed into a state. Okay, it just needed a moment to reset there. So what we're seeing here is uh, this census tract, which is in Arkansas and is a disadvantaged and then in what categories was it disadvantaged, okay? And the other thing that we can do with this tool is to draw to draw a polygon of any type we want. So I just kind of did a free form polygon. And this is being used for people who are applying for grants and they can use this to tell us what percentage of their project area is this disadvantaged percentage? So you can see here with these census tracts that I've selected, uh, they're in generally in Mississippi, we can scroll through because some of them are in Tennessee. So you can see here, it updates with the state. 
And it tells us out of 17 that we selected, five of them are disadvantaged. So that's 29%. So that is under the 40% threshold that would be the target. And that's also pretty obvious by looking at it. So if we switch the project instead to be a little more west, we could pick up some more of the disadvantaged census tracts there. The other, um, since I'm in my browser here, the other um, image that was on that slide is about the bipartisan infrastructure law. I don't know how much US News makes it over there, probably the less the better these days. But um, with the infrastructure law, we've gotten a lot of requests to map where these funds are going to be going. And this was designed for someone to come look at their state. They can select their state again, and then they can see uh, how many bridges are in poor condition. For a small state, that's a lot, right? 45,000. And how much of the funding, so in FY22, which is their current fiscal year, 45 million will be dedicated to repairing bridges. But over five years, it's going to be 225 million. I misspoke, it's only 19 bridges in Delaware. Yeah, 45 is 45,000 is throughout the entire US. But you can look at any state and um, see that data. And the other, um, I spoke about the vaccine rollout. This is just the web map behind it. And you know, we could turn layers on and off. Um, but as I mentioned, this project has sort of passed. So we have the data, but it's not being maintained there. Okay, let me um, switch back to the slideshow. Okay, and I'm going to move on and talk about our strategic plan. I know that some of you have reviewed it. So that was, I was the lead author on that plan. Um, it was published in 2017. And uh, yes, we do have a newer strategic plan, as you notice, that ended in 2020. The problem is really with the administration change. I finished it in December 2020, so over a year ago now. And, um, you know, in January uh, 2021, of course, Biden became the new president. And that's really the problem that we had a rush of his new appointees, and they don't want to release it until they've, until we've completed the larger DOT strategic plan. So, that is due, I, I believe in the spring, we will be publishing our, our um, 2021 through 2024 strategic plan. So I can't show that to you today, but I can briefly talk about the goals, which are um, linked with this other government-wide program called the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. And um, as Sonanto mentioned, the GDA, which is the Geospatial Data Act, that's a piece of legislation from October 2018, which is very impactful to our GIS practitioners at the federal level and in other places as well, a lot of requirements about how we're doing things with GIS. So that's also a large part of my job is implementing these requirements, making sure we're following the regulations. But we also want to advance, so you know, continue building, modernize, find new candidates for our transportation geospatial data sets, continue developing our GIS portal. We also call it the shared service. That's where we're serving out DOT's GIS data. And we're also hosting web GIS applications and to expand our partnerships. So I'm delighted to be talking with you today. You are certainly an external stakeholder. Anyone who uses our data has an interest in it, is uh, part of that group. And as I mentioned, we expect the next strategic plan to be released, um, hopefully in the next few months. Uh, I just thought, you know, I'd share a little bit of my experience writing two strategic plans. And just here in brief are things that have worked for us. For the first plan, I was the sole author. For the second plan, um, I worked in a group of three, the other two were from FAA. And I think that was useful. It actually kind of gave us a lot of ideas about how we can better work together because we have a bit of a problem where FAA is basically separate from the rest of DOT, from the rail, the ports, the highways, et cetera. And as I said, a large part of it is we have an IT wall between us. 
Um, but, you know, getting to know the folks at FAA, learning more about their operations is helping, helping both sides. When we interviewed people, which we did extensive interviews before starting to write the plan, we had a mix of technical staff and management. And we actually decided to divide them up into those groups. So just technical um, and generally just management, although we could have technical in the management group, but we wanted the technical staff to be able to speak freely. And we had a survey where they could have anonymous responses because you know, they're a bit intimidated to say anything negative in front of their supervisors. So we wanted to make them comfortable. One of the best things about a strategic plan is it's a way to ask for the resources that you need to fulfill your goals. So if you're just telling um, the supervisors, the leadership that you need more staff, that you need a bigger budget, uh, you need to provide a good reason for that, right? And the strategic plan has an excellent uh, purpose in, line, in outlining what you're currently doing, where you would like to be, and what you need to get there. And then accompanying it with an implementation plan, don't forget that part of the strategic plan that lays out exactly how you're going to accomplish the goals, breaks it down into work structures. Uh, graphics are always going to catch the eye of leadership. And of course, in GIS, you know, a picture says more than a thousand words. We also found that just using our graphics department to create a logo was very helpful. So now we have this logo, this poster on a lot of our materials, you know, throughout the building. And because most people at DOT don't use GIS. I feel a bit confident now most people know what it is, which wasn't the case, you know, 10 years ago. But just to put on their radar, hey, there's this tool. It could help your work, even if you don't think you're a GIS person, you're maybe a little bit afraid of GIS because it seems intimidating. You know, come talk to us and let us help you understand what it's about. And then finally, to you have to review the strategic plan and see how you're progressing. You can't just publish it and put it on a shelf. So quarterly, we have uh, we convene um, a group to review the goals, where we are, what we've accomplished, and to try to break down any roadblocks that are standing in our way towards making more progress to our goals. And I will briefly talk about data governance. That's a big buzzword over here. I'm not sure if it's the case in Indonesia as well, but geospatial data, you know, really needs to be accurate, accessible, dependable, open. So you don't need proprietary software to access it. Uh, so we've been working this past year, especially on data quality. What are our requirements? Metadata critically important with geospatial data sets. We're also tracking our spending and our staff. Again, that's, that's a way to see how we're doing, seeing if our resource level is appropriate. Of course, security and privacy, always a foundational uh, requirement for your data sets, but we are just tracking when the security reviews are for each systems. Is there anything that's delayed that needs an extension? So we can kind of flag that. Duplication are two parts of DOT building the same data set. Are they building an application with the same data? That's not the best use of our resources. So let's, let's decide which is going in the best direction and consolidate our resources there. 508 compliance. I'm not sure if you have that concept in Indonesia. You may call it something else. That is accessibility for people with hearing or visual impairments. So for example, in, if we have a map like of those census tracts, if someone is visually impaired and they can't see the map, we can also produce a spreadsheet, you know, listing the census tracts and their screen reader can read that to them. And um, last, we are working on geospatial standards and by standards, I mean sort of data models for certain areas. So that's about what fields are included, what are the values in those fields, which are mandatory, what, um, what format is the data in, and, um, and sharing that. So again, words of advice are, what is your current resourcing level? 
Can you track the requirements, implementation, and most importantly, make sure your data is accurate, compliant with any regulations and accessible. So that concludes sort of the formal presentation. And as I mentioned, Pananto kindly forwarded me um, about 10 questions from you all. And I'm, I'm not sure if we should move on to those questions now or take, uh, take additional questions. Okay. Thank you very much, and please give virtual applause to Amy. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, from Ms. Nelson's presentation, we know that uh, there is a long story and effort to optimize the GIS utilization in the United States Department of Transportation. Human resources is playing a vital role in the GIS utilization in US DOT, not only about the quantity, but also the quality of human resources. United States Department of Transportation employs uh, GIS in every administration and sector, such as uh, rail mode, aviation, land transport, maritime, and others uh, field. During the difficult time of a COVID-19 pandemic, US DOT reveals uh, its role in optimizing uh, COVID-19 vaccine distribution. I think from Indonesian side, uh, you, uh, your GIS uh, Implementation is a valuable lesson learned, not only for government purpose, but also other parties such as uh, for academic field. Thank you once again, uh, Amy. So after listening to speaker's presentation now, it is the time for other participants uh, to be involved uh, because uh, we are entering the Q&A sessions. And on behalf of the organizing committee, we apologize in advance if your question cannot be read uh, because of, because the amount of the question against our time limit. And now I would like to read the question that came in and has been created by the organizing committee. Uh, the first question is from this committee, yes. The first question is from Mr. Made Sukmayasa, Land Transportation Polytechnic in Bali, I mean. Uh, Mr. Made is uh, from Bali. Uh, question, it was mentioned that the GIS project at USDOT can be used as a geospatial analysis to identify communities that may have barriers to access uh, COVID-19 vaccine, such as vulnerable population and areas with less equitable access to transportation. What is the USDOT action after you did this analysis? Is there any other institution besides USDOT using your analysis? And what is their responsibility in COVID-19 pandemic management? Amy, uh, please, you can answer the question. Okay, thank you for the excellent questions. I was really impressed reviewing the questions that came in. I don't know that I've ever gotten such um, thoughtful questions. So I will say with this analysis, it helps FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, allocate more staff to the underserved areas. And we work closely with FEMA for disasters which affect transportation. We actually have a desk over there just for transportation. And I can't speak for other federal agencies, COVID assistance activities, but in the chat, I'm gonna paste a web link, which is a data hub, um, which is a popular government resource for COVID geospatial data and it's curated by Esri, the GIS software provider. Okay, thank, thanks, Amy. The se second question, uh, please, committee. The second question is uh, from, from Mr. Rohmat, Land Transportation Training Agency. Question, I read your GI strategic plan for the US DOT version one, 2017 to 2020. One of interesting thing is that National Highway Traffic Safety Administration employ GIS to research on Takata airbag failures. You mentioned that the failures were related and clustered in areas of high temperature and high humidity. I would like to know what other data that you use to do the analysis besides temperature and high humidity data. Uh, the second one, how long the analysis period did you need to jump in the conclusion? to jump in the conclusion that temperature and high humidity uh, were 
uh, the cause of the failure? Amy, please. Okay, so this question, I'm going to need to get back to you. I Last night, I forwarded this to some of my contacts. I have not heard back from them yet. I was not involved personally in this analysis, so I don't want to speak to these specific points of it. So I will, through Hananto, I will um, get a response for you when my contact responds. Okay, thank you. Now we are moving to next questions. Next slide. We are from Ms. Dina. Ms. Dina is from uh, working for a Center for Sustainable Transport Management. The, her, her question, I found in US DOT strategic plan that uh, Federal Railroad Administration used GIS to overlay rail grade crossing, rail accident, and automated track inspection location to provide FRA's Office of Safety, uh, Office of Policy, and Field in Inspector with tools to assist with daily decisions and allocation of resources. Ms. Dina's question is, uh, I would like to know, uh, where is the, I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, and the question I would like to know, where is the position of your special management office, GMO, in terms of this FRA project? Have you involved in this project? Can you explain about the relation between GMO and other administration under USDOT? It means that uh, what is uh, your uh, relationship between GMO, amongst GMO with uh, FRA, uh, FAA and other administration under USDOT. Amy, please. Okay, thank you. There's a lot in that question. So first, let me say that FRA has a mature GIS program and they actually won an award, special achievement in GIS award from ESRI uh, just last year. Uh, the GMO's role with FRA is to inform them about standards and regulations and to facilitate a cross-departmental or cross-government conversations. So the GMO is usually not involved with the day-to-day -day work on a project. And if I may briefly share, I have a couple of slides um, pertaining to this. I have one diagram I'd like to show that uh, shows the relationship between the GMO and the other parts of DOT. Let me just um, briefly share. So here's FRA's Special Achievement Award. We were very proud of that. And a um, little more, I can paste this link into the chat. I will give these slides to Hananto. They have custom viewers on the web. They have a mobile app. They have web mapping services, so data that you can consume and bring into your own GIS. And this is the link where you can find their data. And then the other thing I wanted to show <clears throat> was that relationship. So here, the GMO, so this is where I said, this is my supervisor, Steve, and the FRA um, GIS most senior person is the modal GIO. And she, we, we work with her to implement policy, document resources and provide support. And then with all of the users in her division, she passes down to them resources and communicates the policy. And then we're receiving our guidance from Congress. FGDC is Federal Geospatial Data Committee and OMB is the Office of Management and Budget. So they give us the guidance, they tell us what to do and we provide back to them reports and documentations. I will stop sharing now. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, now we move to the next uh, next question, please, committee. Yes, uh, this question is uh, from Mr. Fabry. He is uh, from Greater Jakarta Transport Authority. The question is related to urban transportation. As we know, transportation is derived demand. It means that transportation has a strong relationship with land use planning. Regarding this, uh, there is a concept uh, there is a concept to integrate transport and land use planning, which is TOD, Transit Oriented Development. TOD aims at managing urban growth in transit corridor, which has several characteristics such as mixed land use, compact, workability, and development focus on public transit area. Uh, Amy, do you have any idea about the implementation of GIS in TOD in United States? And the second one, 
can we use GIS to identify the potential location of uh, transit infrastructure, such as railway station and TOD location, based on land use analysis? Emmy, any idea about it? Sure. So I would say that a lot of this planning would be done by the state and local governments, not the federal government. And the federal government were concerned with accessibility to transportation. As, and as I mentioned, finding these transportation disadvantaged areas, mapping them with GIS and doing analysis about how our projects are affecting them. Um, for the second question, I would say that um, network analyst in Esri GIS is a tool that comes to mind. That's a tool that you can take impedances into account and calculate realistic travel distances that aren't just, you know, always a steady rate along a road because that's not generally how it works. If you, know, if you, you cannot cross a river, for example, on foot and network analyst looks at all of those things and gives you a better um, model for, um, for distances traveled. And I think that's related to your concept. Thank you. Uh, we still have many questions for you, Amy. Uh, the participants are so interested with uh, your material for today. Okay, next question is from Mr. Fadli Adriansa. Uh, he is from Human Resources Agency, MOT. MOT means uh, Minister of Transportation. Question, if I'm not mistaken, USDOT has used GIS since uh, mid-1980s. However, you have started to select GIS officer in 2008 and established GIS management office in 2019. Before you selected GIS officer in 2008 and established GIS management office in 2019, did you work or collaborate with other parties to handle GIS in USDOT? The second question, you mentioned that USDOT used GIS to forecast transit ridership demand. Do you forecast this ridership by yourself or with other parties' assistance? Amy? Okay, thank you. Um, so again, I was the GIS manager at FIMSA, the pipeline division from 2006 to 2019. And I found that we were mostly working in isolation in our modes. We did have a cross DOT user group, which met occasionally, but eventually it sort of went stagnant. And then in 2019, when I became the deputy GIO, I brought it back and it's been incredibly useful to have a user group. Um, I would say that the Geospatial Data Act has also been <clears throat> an important driver in cross-government GIS collaboration. So, excuse me. When the Geospatial Data Act was passed, we kind of all knew at the agencies that we had to work together, bounce ideas off of each other, pool our resources to implement it. I also mentioned this group called the Federal Geospatial Data Committee. That's existed since at least the early 2000s, but generally the representatives are at the director or executive level. So I think it's important certainly to have people meeting at that level, but you also need the technical hands-on people meeting, networking with each other, sharing ideas, uh, sharing resources, sharing solutions. And for the transportation ridership question, I'm going to find you an appropriate contact at the FTA. I reached out to someone last night. He had just started going on vacation for a couple of weeks and I'll see if I can um, find someone to answer that in the meantime. Thank you, Ami. Just one more question. Uh, I, check random, I check randomly from a uh, chat box. I found the question from Mr. Novan. He is working for planning agency, Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia. His question is, this is related traffic management. There are so many benefits by using GIS in some areas in United States. Does GIS just give support in providing data to solve the traffic problem? Or GIS itself could give some options or strategies or solution to do that? What, is there any idea about it, Amy? Sure, um, I would say, you know, in the US that's generally uh, provided by private parties, like Waze is the biggest one that comes to mind where they are mapping actually real-time traffic. So they are suggesting uh, detours around congested areas. But I'm also thinking about a project that we uh, did at DOT or that's, that's ongoing, which is mapping work zones. So that's you know where you've got a road crew 
working on the road. And we've sort of built this from the ground up. We've reached out to the state governments, the local governments. So they're the ones that know where the work is going to be happening. Can we create together a data model, a data standard? So all of our data is in the same format. <clears throat> and can we then share that you know, among everyone who wants to consume it? So we're sharing it with the Waze and the Google Maps, et cetera. And then those applications are routing people around the work zones. And it's especially um, friendly towards automated vehicles, which of course is you know, very important uh, ongoing and future development that we're looking at at DOT. Can the automated vehicles, GIS, consume this data and steer themselves around these work zones? Thank you. Unfortunately, due to the time constraint, this would be the end of uh, Q&A session. We apologize uh, for others questions that are not read and answered by Amy from United States Department of Transportation. Uh, Amy, is there any statement before we close the Q&A session? Um, it's, been, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Um, I'm so glad to have this opportunity. And thank you for so many questions. Um, you know, Hananto, if you see ones that you think are especially important, please forward them to me and I can respond with email. So Thank thanks you, again Annette. for this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, okay, the next session is the certificate. We humbly present the certificate to our extraordinary speaker. Of course, right now we will present it virtually. Please, committee. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we are waiting for the certificate. Yes, uh, Amy, this is uh, the certificate uh, for you. Uh, thank you for your time and your valuable lesson learned for Indonesian stakeholders. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our webinar, knowledge sharing on the role of GIS in transport policy and analysis. Uh, today, Indonesian government has been accelerating transportation infrastructure development all over the country. Being able to visualize your assets, the surrounding environment when you build, upgrade, or repair transportation infrastructures helps you to prioritize your work and make the right decisions. A GIS or Geographical Information System will allow you to do all this and much more. Uh, Amy, thank you very much for your kind assistance. We really appreciate your knowledge sharing on GIS at the United States Department of Transportation. We hope that you are still available to assist, uh, to assist us in the future, notably for enhancing transportation sector in Indonesia. So on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express gratitude to our speakers for today and also uh, for all our participants. We have around 500 partic participants in this webinar. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, see you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless us all. Let's give applause to all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, and now you may leave the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Amy. Everyone. Yeah, thank you. You can leave the meeting, Amy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ananto.